Welcome to this second lesson on plugged and Boolean logic. And in it, we're going to look at the answer to lesson one's starter puzzle. Um, the question of the boxes, which box is the prize in? And we're also going to have a quick recap on truth tables and logic circuits. So the question that we started with in lesson one was this. It was in which box is the prize? And you have three boxes, A, B and C. Only one box is telling the truth. And that's the key bit of information. So you have three different boxes and you can see that three different boxes are saying different things, um, but only one box is telling the truth. Now, before we get into the answer, let's remind ourselves a little bit about truth tables and how they work. Now, over here, if you had inputs of A and B, and you have different combinations. So for instance, here I've started with an input of zero and zero for A and B. Um, if you were filling in a truth table for A and B, it would be zero because for an output of an AND gate to be one, you would need both A and B to be one. So in this case, it would be zero. In this case for A or B, it would be zero again, but the OR gate is slightly different in that you can have one or the other, um, which is on, and the output would be on or one. So if we fill in this AND gate, you can see that in all these cases, it would be zero. And finally, you have an input of one and a one, and you finally get a one. Now in an OR gate, that would be zero. You could also put it in as false or true, and that's the same thing as a false being a zero and a true being a one. So if we do it for the OR gate, you'd have false, true, true, and true. And then finally, we have this notation here, which means not, and it's basically the opposite of A. So if A was false, that would be true. If A was false again, that would be true. And you can see that's inverted, true, and that's inverted again. So the Boolean operators used here are AND, OR, and NOT. Now, let's come back to this prize problem. How can we solve this using Boolean logic? Only one box, as we remember, is telling the truth. Now, if you look at this truth table, I've got the inputs here, A, B, and C. And A, B, and C refer to the boxes, and the T is for if one box contains the prize. So in this case, we can see that A contains the prize. F, in this case, denotes not containing the prize. If I've written F, it means that B does not contain the prize. Now we know only one box contains the prize. So in this scenario, in this combination that I'm putting in to the truth table, A contains the prize. I could then fill in different combinations. So in one situation, we could have it that B has the prize. And of course, the last one, C has the prize. Now, we've filled in these different combinations and we need to find out which box is telling the truth. So if you look at these columns down here on the right, these three columns refer to the statements made by each box. So this column here is about A has the prize. B does not have it. A does not have it. And you can, if you think about it, you can convert these into a simple letter or formula. So A has the prize just means that A has it. B does not have it could be represented as not B. And A does not have it, which is what box C is saying, is um, represented here as not A. So let's quickly fill these in and see what we get. So here we can see that A has the prize. In this case, that would be true. What's not B? Um, and we'll come back to that. Let's fill in this column first. So A has the prize. Again, we're just literally taking the value of A, which is F here, and filling it in here, F. And again, that would be F. Now, not B. So we look at the input B, which is here, and we see that it's F. So of course, not B would be the opposite of F, which is true. Not T would be F, and not F would be T. And we do exactly the same thing 
super easy for A, which is saying A does not have it. So if A does not have it, in this truth table, which we're filling in, we literally say that we look at A, which is T, and this would be F. A is F, so that would be T. A is F, so that would be T. Now, if you look really closely at what we've just filled in, and I'm going to try and draw something around these things that I've filled in, you'll notice that this is a TTF, FFT, FTT. And we know that only one box is telling the truth. Only one box can be telling the truth at any one given time. So it can't be that, because in this we have two boxes which are telling the truth, or which are marked as T. It can't be that one, because again we have two boxes which are marked as a T. So it has to be this combination here. And this is really interesting. So um, immediately, for some of you, the penny's dropping, you're understanding what's going on, and you're seeing that, you know, B is true, B has the prize in this combination because this combination must be true. So let's look further at that. So if we look at what's happening here, I'm literally taking this FFT, which we know is the correct combination, and I'm placing it under the boxes. And let's have a look at what each of these boxes are saying. So let's get a, a different, perhaps a highlighter or a different color, green. Now we know that this is false. So this statement is false. A has the prize is false. We know that this statement is true. A does not have it. So we're, we know that A does not have it. In other words, A doesn't contain the prize. B does not have it. Now we know that only one box is telling the truth. And in this case, it is box C. So box C tells us that A does not have it. Box A says A has the prize, and we know that this is true, A does not have the prize, and that leaves us with B. B does not have it, and this statement is false. In other words, B does have the prize. So that's quite complicated, and you might have to listen to that again or think about it, and perhaps you got that intuitively, but you weren't sure how to work it out using logic tables. But that's a brilliant example of how you can take a problem, a real world problem, and really work it out using logic. So A does not have the prize. This is actually saying A really does not have the prize. And here we know that B is lying. B does have it. So we come back and we do a bit of recapping on AND gates, OR gates, and NOT gates, knowing how important they are, how, how simple this really is. Um, and hopefully you know the symbols. Remember that that sort of inverted V is an AND. Now, if you have an input of a zero and a zero, a zero and a one, a one and a zero, and a one and one, you should be able to predict the output in a truth table. How did we get these combinations? Well, really, all I'm doing is I'm writing zero, one, two, three in binary. So this zero, zero is zero in binary. Zero, one is one in binary. 1, 0 is 2 in binary, and this is 3. So what's the output? We know that in an AND gate, you must have two inputs, which are 1, for the output to be 1. So immediately we know that only the last output would be 1. Hopefully you have looked at this slide and immediately recognized that that's the wrong symbol for an AND gate, for an OR gate, um, and that's also the wrong little drawing up there at the top. That's not an OR gate, that's an AND gate. And you, you do need to be very familiar with that um, and quite confident. So keeping in mind that that drawing up at the top here is incorrect, let's fill in the truth table. So we've got a zero and a zero. Again, we're doing exactly the same thing. We've got a zero and a one. We've got a one and a zero, a one and a one. And in an OR gate, which is different from an AND gate, we know that if either input is on or is a one, which it is in this case, the output would be one. And again, do remember this is an AND gate, and hopefully you're beginning to spot these things and know them. So this is actually the, that's an AND gate, of course, which it is. 
but an OR gate is, has a slightly different shape um, and you can remind yourself of that. A NOT gate is super simple. You only have two inputs, um, uh, well, two different possible inputs. You have one input at a time, which either zero, which will always give you the opposite, which is a one, or you have an input of a one, which gives you a zero. You can look um, again at complex equations like this with P being the output and you have A inverted V and in brackets P or C. And then we have P is equal to A, which is, and this is a V, or in brackets P, B or C, not B. And what you're doing is you're remembering that each of these equations equates basically to the different gates and a logic circuit with p being the output sometimes in an exam they might put in they might say q uh, but you just you just know that the output is what comes out at the end after all the inputs have gone through the gates in a logical sequence i suggested last lesson that you go to logically dot lee backslash demo and you can try out making these for yourself so you can actually add a switch uh, a switch can be on or off and remember an on represents a one an off represents a zero and then you can trace what's happening you can see that this is a one which is going into this and gate here's a zero and a zero going into an and gate so a zero is coming out so you've got a one and a zero coming out of an and gate and of course the output is zero so I'll pause the screen here, and if you have downloaded the PowerPoints, you can use the little circles at the bottom to kind of drag them up and see what the output would be at each stage. In this case, you can see that we have a zero and a zero and a zero. Zero and a zero going through an OR gate would give you a zero. So we get a zero here, and of course we get a zero here. Now this goes through. We get a zero going through a NOT gate, which gives you a one, and that's why the bulb is on. Again, do pause the screen, discuss this, and see if you can get the answer, and maybe have someone stand up and explain it to the class. Here's another one where you have an input of one, zero, zero. What's the output? We've looked already at constructing truth tables. Now, if you have more than one input, of course, if it's not a NOT gate, you ha might have two inputs or three inputs, in this case, A, B, and C. You do exactly the same thing. You write your numbers in binary. So, for instance, here you would start with zero, which is, because we have three inputs, would be zero, zero, zero. Then you'd go to one in binary, which would be zero, zero, one. Remember, if you only had inputs A and B, this would just be two digits in binary. So you would be writing the letter, the number two, using two digits, zero and one, for instance. So here we write two, then we write three, and then we go on like that. Now, this is quite a, a complex equation, so we break it down, and that's what basically what I've done in this table here. We've broken it down, so we first find out what B or C is, and we can see it very clearly that B or C is zero, 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 in that case, one, 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 and at the end is a zero. Um, and then once we know what B or C is, it's pretty simple to just look at this column here, B or C, and compare it with the A column. So A and B or C uh, would give you a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, because we're looking, remember, at the one and the zero, and again, the zero. And you keep doing that so that you have every combination completed.